in the first half. Likewise, Carlos Delfino was the only Argentine player did not make an appearance, and he is on the floor here for the third quarter as well. Kevin Durant saying hello. Hey, where you been? <laughs> well, he's been away for three years, yes. undergoing seven, count them, seven surgeries to his right foot, trying to make his way back. If Manu Ginobili starts the second half with a layup, just the way he Ginobili. finished off the first half with that buzzer-beating three. You know, and so many guys when I was a teammate with Manu and also playing against him saying, um, he's going left. And yeah, he <laughs> is going left, but it's so hard because he comes yeah. off that screen and roll so tight, and he's uses his shoulders to get by guys and he's so physical and then he still showed a little burst to be able to get to the bucket over deandre jordan still true still going left yes still pretty good at it still going hard durant missed the three the u.s was just five of 21 from three point range in the first half didn't shoot the ball exceptionally well didn't really matter because they cleaned up so many offensive boards and because of all those turnovers as well and smitty with that shorter three-point line you know at some point that's going to come as well guys like kevin durant and Carmelo Anthony have made a mockery of the international three-point line. Yeah, it's almost like a mid-range shot for those guys. And also, they can catch and shoot it easily with guys defending them. And there's Manu Ginobili with a nice pump fake. He misses that one. But you said it best. That three-point line for a Durant, for a Carmelo, and a Paul, Paul George, could end up, they can run off four or five in a row and really extend leads in games. Irving back to Jordan, gets it back. La Provitola had to go around the Jordan screen. No chance. And Irving cashes in by knocking down the U.S.'s 6-3 of the night. And Kyrie is so good off the catch and shoot three, but his ability, like you said, with this shorter line off the dribble. And there's Mono Ginobili. <laughs> now that is one of the classic elements of Mono Ginobili that, that won't be part of his... Uh, Argentina's arguing that was a tipped ball. Now here's some of the differences we talked about, including that three-point line, which is significantly shorter at the FIBA level. Uh, about a foot and a half, in fact. Fewer fouls allowed in a smaller game, or a shorter game, I should say. And talked about goaltending. It does not exist at the FIBA no, level. Once the ball all. hits the rim off a shot, anybody can grab it, touch it. Carlos Delfino just picks Kevin Durant. Yeah, yeah, it was pretty nice. He's been waiting three years to do that, Smitty. And Mano Ginobili threw his legs, and I wonder if we could get a shot of Coach Popovich who was sitting next to Jerry Colangelo. They used to drive Pop crazy. Well, that is a, that's an element of Manu's game that won't be part of his Hall of Fame induction speech, is that he can drive coaches crazy occasionally for a long time now with some ill-advised passes, we'll put it that way. Carmelo Anthony knocks down the three-pointer, 7-3, and there's maybe a little momentum from the three-point line for the U.S. Not good for anybody if they can dominate the points in the paint and they get a chance offensively to start knocking down threes. Argentina had a couple of tries at it there. Trail by 27 here early in the third quarter. Irving missed it. No Argentina player really went after that ball. <laughs> I just love Nocioni. Every trip down, he goes at referees. There's Popovich. With his head down, and he's next in line. Phenomenal job he's done. And can't wait to get a chance to see him take over for Coach K and watching Ginobili. I mean, it was a treat when he had a chance to play with Ginobili when he first came because <laughs> trying to control Ginobili was something to watch because he threw his legs around the back passes, and he would give you, hey, I don't know what I did. Coach, hey, hands I up. Hands up. Hands raised. Palms up. It's the way I play, Coach. Really one of the most unique players in NBA history. Basically brought the Euro step to the United States. Now utilized by so many players. James Harden, most notably, foul on Carmelo Anthony trying to guard La Provitola. And there was Even a guy having uh, a conversation about it. I was young and watching him and Mano Ginobili. Shrunas Marshalunas used to <laughs> go so hard with his strength. The same thing with the Euro step. Both those guys are very tough to guard. And Marshall Lewis is such a big body for mm. a guard. Just bull strong. Scola out to Delfino. And Carlos hasn't lost a step. Oh, he has it. Good for him to come back and knock down a shot here. Good to see him back on the floor after struggling those foot surgeries. Anthony with another three. Carmelo can heat up quickly you, you look at Carmelo right now 15 minutes 11 points he's like a point a minute guy for the United States 
Ginobili off the glass, no good with the left hand, and it'll go back to the United States. Carmelo Anthony, two Olympic golds already, and a bronze. Didn't play much for that 04 team that lost Argentina. He and LeBron James were both rookies on that team. Harrison Barnes now on the board for the U.S. Knocks out his first shot of the night. Couldn't get any minutes in the first half. They're getting a chance now to start. And there's DeAndre Jordan and Kevin Durant beating each other up for the rebound. <laughs> Jordan knocked down. <laughs> then he lost the ball. Delfino got it. La Provita will have thought twice about trying to shoot it over Jordan. But Argentina gets it back. Delfino in the corner underneath. Well done as he finds Melcioni. A couple of names American fans know very well. Both guys who had pretty good NBA careers, Carlos Delfino and Andres Nocioni, who is still productive player at 36. In fact, he was the MVP of the EuroLeague Final Four just last year. And look at the Scola run, and because he ran so hard, gave a free opportunity for Manu Ginobili. Good job by Argentina. Still down 24 points, but looking better offensively. And this half. And Ginobili's knocked down three of the six threes he has tried. Irving with an answer with a two on the other end. Ginobili has 11 points. That's seven now for Kyrie Irving. Delfino with the ball. He's got the Scola screen. Back to Scola for three. And the new Brooklyn net drains it. You know, Louis Scola last year for the Raptors. Uh, we always we talked about his post play, but last year he shot 40 percent on three pointers. I mean, increased his rate. Well, that's one thing. One thing Argentina is doing exceptionally well right now is knocking down threes. They're nine of 19 from the great beyond. And if they were a little bit closer, we could have a better ball game in the first half of knocking down those shots. And that's the one area I talked about as a key for the United States team. They have to defend that three point line. The teams can get right back in the game or hang around. Coach K will swap out everybody here. George Thompson, Butler, Cousins, and Kyrie Irving does remain on the floor. Irving out to Cousins. George working with Cousins and an offensive foul on Paul George. You can see Paul George determined to come off that screen. Just Third, use his arm a little bit. Third foul on George, defended by Patricio Garino. Patricio did a nice job of playing the play because they really sent the pick and roll down and kept Paul George on one side, and yeah, he shoved him a little bit. Garino's a good defender. He was Atlantic 10 all defense at George Washington oh, University. No, Sioni with another bucket and the Argentines are now within 21. U.S. led by as many as 29 in this game. Battle for the rebound down low. Butler was fouled. Matt, we get a chance to see Manu Ginobili. Knock it down threes. He's in fantastic shape. 38 years of age. A 69 to 48 third quarter lead for Team USA as they open up exhibition play here in Vegas. And I'm joined by a guy who is uh, busier than J Lo and Britney Spears these days in Vegas. Jay Wright, national championship winning coach at Villanova and helping out with the U.S. select team. What's it been like for your world, would I imagine, the last few months? It has. It's, it's been it's been crazy. I, I committed to the select team before we, we won, so I didn't know it was going to be this crazy this summer. But it's been great working with this team. Have you helped out Kyle Lowry doing some trash talking here? <laughs> no. I'm, uh, I'm really impressed with him, and it's a different role for him. You know, he's coming off the bench, kind of a cheerleader and an energy bringer. I'm, I'm, uh, I'm proud of him. I like the way he's handling this. Working with Greg Popovich with the select team, what has been the goal this week with those group of young guys who are trying to get on this national team? Select team did an amazing job this week. All young NBA players, right? And they, they came in and they ran France, Argentina, Serbia. They ran their cuts against the Olympic team, played zone against them, and then we scrimmaged amongst each other so Coach Pop could get a look at future Olympians. I see you've been sitting next to Coach Pop during this game. When Manu Ginobili takes shots, is he 
hitting you? Is he elbowing you? Anything happening? Is he saying anything? It's funny. He knows everything Mono's going to do before he did it. He had that turnover right in front of Pop right here. Pop just shook his head. He, he, he knew it was coming, but uh, it's been amazing spending time with Pop. He's a great guy, but uh, his, his basketball IQ is off the charts. I've learned a lot. What, what are your aspirations with Team USA here? Could you see your goal growing every summer? You know, I, I've, I've worked with Team USA a, a lot. I've, I've coached uh, Pan Am games, Goodwill games. I've, I've worked with Coach K in any way they've asked me to. And this is kind of a, it's a, it's a team, it's a family. Whatever they need, um, they, you know, I, I, I've done different things, work with the select team. So I'd do anything they needed. Well, Coach, uh, we appreciate it. We know you've been a very busy man out here running camps in addition to working with our select team, so we appreciate you taking the time. Thanks, man. I love it. You represent Hofstra well, man. That's right. Hofstra guy right here, Matt Weiner and Steve Smith. <laughs> uh, well, you're talking to the son of a Hofstra gal and the nephew of a couple of the Hof couple of Hofstra guys as well. So we've got the, the whole Hofstra thing covered here in Las Vegas. U.S. has uh, actually been outscored here in the third quarter by Argentina so far. They have. they have heated up from three-point range. In fact, Argentina's four of six from three-point range here in the third. A little bit more competitive game, and they've defensively done a nice job. And offensively, you said it best, they knocked down some threes, but not a lot of easy buckets, especially on the offensive glass for the USA. Skola into the post with Lowry on him. Remember, he first forced a turnover in the first half in that matchup. Papa Vidola out to Skola. Off on that three, Nocioni grabs it, and he's fouled by Lowry on the baseline. Right, no so Nocioni was already ready to argue the call, <laughs> even though he got it. Man, he got the call, like you said. It's just in his DNA to go at referees. But you said it best. I mean, Argentina's done a nice job in this second half. They're still down 20, but so far, they've won this second half. Cousins just swallows up that ball from Scola and is called for the foul. So happy for Jay Wright. You know, just to go back to talk to him, Matt, talk about him. He, I mean, phenomenal job with that Villanova team the last two years. Uh, the team the year before, you thought had a chance to win a national championship, and we know in. Uh, March Madness, anything can happen, but this year, weather to storm, and wow, was that a big shot. Yes. The way they ended to win that game. Probably the greatest finish to a national championship game there has ever been. Skull at the line here, fifth team foul on the U.S. That triggers the bonus. And Skull, great shooter, knocks him down. He's in the double digits now with 10. Leads down to 18. Once as big as 29 for the U.S. Skull in the paint defended, excuse me, Skull defending Cousins and strips him. Brusino over to Garino. Nocioni puts it on the deck. Try to scoop it up. It's an air ball collected by Cuz. Thompson passed Brusino. Good job. And the well, that was Argentina a hands have yes. been much more active here in the second half. You, that, that's a victory for them. You're talking about biggest lead by uh, the USA team, 29. It's, it's down to 18. We got a game. Foul on Garino, his first. Lowry will inbound for the U.S. The Toronto Raptor over to Thompson. Quick trigger three. Cousins kept it alive. Lowry saves it back to Thompson. Out to Butler for three. That won't go. Cousins again there for the board. And for about the umpteenth time here, an Argentine player is forced to foul an American as the offensive rebounds. When you start talking about three-point line, ten three-pointers made by Argentina for 47%. Uh, the USA is eight. And that's why they cut into this league. It's been the problem for them is on the glass throughout this game. Uh, plus 21 for the United States of America, and that's 38 points in the paint because of it. those are big, big numbers. The U.S. has doubled Argentina's rebound output. Lead back to 20 thanks to the Cousins' free throws. La Provitola has it guarded by Thompson. Screen by Scola. Grabbed Cousins' arm to try to create a little space. Still didn't work. 
Smacked away by Cuz. Stays with Argentina. 11 seconds on the shot clock. Marcus Cousins did a nice job of being able to switch out on a guard and slide his feet and block a shot without fouling. Into Scola, back to La Provitola. Baseline, thought about the reverse, instead to Carino for the three, that won't fall. And here comes Kyle Lowry, ahead to Thompson. Thompson into Garino's chest, does a nice job moving his feet. And comes back to try to strip Cousins, but he'll pick up the foul. Yeah, DeMarcus Cousins, nice job of in traffic, being able to make plays a big that has a skill set of handling the basketball and making plays. He's, he's real fluid as a guy 6'11". Been able to dribble the basketball and more importantly than that with his head up. And as he misses this free throw. Foul actually goes against Skull. It's his third. Cousins is a two-time NBA All-Star. All-NBA second team member the last two years. The lane violation there, but the shot went, so we play on. Under a minute to go, third quarter. U.S. up by 21. Brusino out front, and he's called for the trap. That's because of the pressure of Clay Thompson on ball pressure. And then you have Paul George and Jimmy Butler, two wing guys that close the gap, and they take your space away, force that turnover and that travel. This really is a great defensive lineup on the floor right now with three wing players in Butler, George, and Thompson, as good as really anybody in the league defensively. Thompson stripped by Carino. Patricio Carino can really guard people. I mentioned he was a three-time all-defense guy at George Washington in the Atlantic 10. He's done a nice job staying in front of people. Yeah, getting his chest in front. Just a little bit of the grabbing. A little holding of Clay Thompson. He draws that foul. But like you said, a good job by him being able to slide his feet and take the bump. Uh, so impressed again. Talked about Clay Thompson. The run he had with Golden State last year in the playoffs without Stephen Curry. He had to be the number one yep. option. But I think also, also to be able to guard one through three and the energy. He had to give out on the defensive end and still score the basketball. He's put himself as a, he's always been an elite shooter, offensive guy, and I think one of the best two-way guys in the NBA. I may have saved the Warriors season with that 41-point game six in the Western Conference Finals. Gold medal winner with the U.S. two years ago at the World Cup. I watched that team a lot, covering them over in Spain. I thought he was their most consistent player over the course of that tournament. Great trigger. And he can really shoot it. <laughs> we were talking about a guy who missed it, and we were saying he can really shoot it because it looks so good. And it squares up and gets on balance. U.S. just 8 of 31 from three-point range. That'll come. Only a matter of time. La Provitola goes behind the back, working on Draymond Green. Step back. Butler touched it last, but they run out of quarter. And the U.S. is right back where they started the third quarter. Argentina plays him even. And we go to the fourth with a 23-point United States lead. Fourth quarter on the way here from Las Vegas as Team USA launches the road to Rio in the 2016 Olympics. The U.S. men's and women's pre-Olympic tours continue with coverage on NBA TV presented by Nike. On Sunday, you'll see China and this U.S. men's team at 8 Eastern time with Marv Albert on the call with Reggie Miller. Monday, it's the U.S. women's select team against the U.S. women's Olympic team at 10 Eastern time. Tuesday, I'll call in Oakland of China and the U.S. men. Smitty will be back with me for that as well at 10 Eastern time. Wednesday, France and the U.S. women. Clay Thompson gets us started here in the fourth quarter after Argentina played the United States even in the third. Thompson now with nine for the U.S. Great execution on that offensive play in there. You can see right now Kyle Lowry, Draymond Green running down the basketball turnover for Argentina. Gabriel Deck threw it away for Argentina. Another turnover for them. That's their 17th of the game. Did a better job in the third quarter after 14 first-half turnovers. 
Well, that's what the U.S. has done. We've seen this over and over again uh, in different quadrennials, either the World Cup mm -hmm. or the Olympics, is that their pressure can just overwhelm opponents. It is, and now would you have the versatility of these so many wing guys being able to switch? That's extremely hard. You got to have guards that point guards with some size to be able to attack that. And now you have Kyle Lowry inside to DeRozan grabbing rebounds. Argentina now coming up with the offensive rebound, and that's where it's going to be hard for teams. And that's why you look at a team like Spain. You can't switch on Marcus Hall and Paul because all they both was playing together right. because of their ability. Uh, they're a team that could be reckoned with. Marcus saw not playing, so uh, United States okay with that one. George in the open floor once again. That's where he's done his damage in this game. In the paint at the three-point line. The analytics guys love Paul George tonight. <laughs> yes. Layups and three points. Layups and threes. They don't like the mid-range game. How great is it that Paul George is out here wearing the red, white, and blue? And not to belabor the point, but everybody remembers what happened. Yeah. Two years ago, August 1st, when George went down, and it, it still sounds bad if you use the technical term, the medical term, mm -hmm. but he suffered an open tibia fibula fracture to his right leg. At the time, the instant reaction was a lot of people wondered if it might be a career-ending injury. It was that gruesome, frankly. Fourth quarter of the showcase game then. But Basically missed the entire following season, came back, played six games. Last year, though, 78 games, really productive for the Pacers. Great uh, playoff series, although the Pacers lost. And here he is once again, about to go to the Olympics. Well, Matt, you said it. Uh, when he came back, like you said, after he missed that entire year, those six games, he actually didn't look bad. His timing and his uh, athletic ability wasn't there. And then last year, it was phenomenal to watch him play. And then the beginning of this broadcast, uh, to me, he's in my conversation, a guy looking forward ahead to the season. Could be an MVP candidate. I mean, he was phenomenal in the playoffs last year. And I think, like you said, this two-year of rehab and getting his knee back and the way he's moving right now, could be in that conversation. So good in the playoff series against the Toronto Raptors. Averaged 27 points, just under eight rebounds, four assists in that loss to Toronto. Made a great point about the risks and why these guys are out here. He said, we're not forced to play for our country. We mm -hmm. do it because we want to. And I love that statement by Paul George. Uh, I just, I love he's able to be able to close this chapter. Uh, a lot of people say, why would he play again? What happened? But it's basketball. And I think for him, as he said, he wants to represent his country. And he said, we're not forced, like you said. He, he wanted to play. And I think it's beautiful getting a chance to see him get a chance to have a possibility to win a gold medal this year. And a big hand for George as he steps off. He leads the U.S. with 18 points so far. Durant to DeRozan who went for a 360 finish. Lost it on the way up. That's what DeMar DeRozan brings to the table. He's had a pretty good summer as well. $139 million contract with the Raptors. Did he sign that like a 12... <laughs> yeah, he had midnight. the pen in his hand <laughs> just when wait. the clock struck midnight. <laughs> yes. When do I say yes? There's a lot of speculation in the years leading up to his free agency, and he had to opt out first that he might want to return to L.A., possibly with the Lakers. He's an L.A. guy, grew up and was born and raised in Compton, California. But there was no question in his mind. He wanted the years. He wanted the familiarity of Toronto, and he is a Raptor for the foreseeable future. He loves Toronto. He loves Dwayne Casey and Masai Ujiri, what they're doing. And we speculated, like you said, the media about L.A., but for him it was, hey, I didn't take any visits. I didn't talk to anybody else. I wanted to return to Toronto. And you have him and Kyle Lowry. They can just add another piece. I know they lost some pieces during the offseason this year. This may be Ambo. It's going to be huge for them to replace. Mm -hmm. Sullinger is a guy who plays differently than Biombo. Valentunas has to have a good year and continue to prove for them to stay status quo. DeRozan in traffic. Dahlia and Deck converge defensively.
Timeout on the floor here in Las Vegas. The U.S. leads it by 28. Complete post-game coverage of the U.S.-Argentina game on game time here on NBA TV at 11 Eastern time. Kristen Ludlow and our man 3D, Dennis Scott. Holding down studio right here on NBA TV. U.S. by 28. They have led by as many as 30 tonight. Argentina played them even in the third quarter. Draymond Green establishes a new biggest lead of the night. And from his new teammate, Kevin Durant. That's right. We haven't Two. talked about that. that. Interesting, those uh, those guys are getting to know each other in this context. Getting to know each other better. They obviously knew each other. Right. DeRozan in the open floor doesn't have numbers in front of him. Leaves it for Lowry. He pushes, sends it back out to Harrison Barnes. Off on the three. Kevin Durant stunned a lot of folks. He just stunned Carino as well, <laughs> defensively. <laughs> Wow, that's deep. Deep Red three for Dre, and nothing but air. Although, to be fair, it's a shorter international line. They all look deep. Yeah, they're deep. Durant knocks it down. Man, he, I, I mean, there are some guys that can score. I've seen this league, and I put him right up there that could just flat out score and bunches and over and over and year after year. I, I don't think he'll ever average under 20. He need to be played 20 seasons. Hard to imagine. Four-time scoring champ, Garino gets a three back for Argentina. You're going to have four All-Stars, all in their prime, all well under the age of 30 in the same starting lineup in Golden State. And I can't wait to hear the reaction as Durant tees up another three. 18 now to tie Paul George to the team lead. KD heating up here in the fourth quarter. We, we, it's not fair. You have Stephen Curry and Clay Thompson. The way they shoot the basketball, and you add Kevin Durant. And Durant, um, Durant's over by us and in a little bit of pain. Mm -hmm. <laughs> He's as combustible a scorer as there is in the NBA. Watch his form. And we got so used to seeing he and Russell Westbrook work together. It's going to be really interesting to see how he fits in to that ball movement offense in Golden State. Do his scoring numbers go up? Do they go down a little? I mean, he's I think he, down just a little, Matt, maybe a few points. But I think he's he'll be more efficient, and I think um, he'll get more wide open shots, and I think he'll have a lot left to finish games when you just say, hey. We need a bucket. Clay mm -hmm. can do it. Steph can do it. We know that. But there, there's a guy that also can do it at a high level. And just a nightmare of a matchup. If you're a, a team that has a great wing defender, say San Antonio. Whoa! Whoa! KD's feeling a little bit. That was about <laughs> six feet outside the line. <laughs> and, you're, and you're the Spurs and Popovich. And you say, hey, Kawhi, you, you have Clay. <laughs> Who guards Kevin Durant or vice versa? I don't know how many teams I have two wing defenders, elite wing defenders to guard Clay and also a Kevin Durant. And I'm not even talking about a team that have a point guard to guard Stephen Curry as well. Well, you know better than I. You know, you go through those pregame meetings and you've got on the on the whiteboard the guy you have to stop. They've got three of those guys, and then Draymond Green is a triple double threat. I, I, I mean, you still have Iguodala and also Andre. Like you said, and Draymond Green, those two guys being able to do all the dirty work and the little things. And we know Draymond can put up some points as well. I think the only thing you have to worry about the Warriors is how they're going to fill out their bench yep. and athleticism from the guys that they still have on the team. They might become a little bit of a slower team when they start to go to their bench. It's interesting. Barbosa's gone. Zaza Pachulia is there. Andrew Bogut was traded. Argentina did turn it over. That's over and back. And a violation against Argentina. But the top end talent is sort of mind boggling in Golden State. It's going to be a great scene up there when Kevin Durant makes his first appearance as a warrior in the building doing things like that. Durant now with 23. Boy, and making it. it look easy. Oh, you took the words right out of my mouth. 
Hondo trying his best at 5'11 against the 6'11. <laughs> okay, 6'9. 6'11, Kevin Durant. And he went to the dirt off to one leg fadeaway against him. Boy, who hasn't guarded Campazzo in this game for the United States? Facundo Campazzo came in thinking, oh, okay, you know, I can make some things happen. I'm a playmaker. They've switched everything. He's had like 10 different American defenders on him. And then he gets this. stuck in this. in this situation. And he goes to the one leg and fade away. <laughs> Just because he's so comfortable with that shot, but not necessary to go against a fadeaway against the 5 11, like you said, Facundo. Now, the Americans remember Campazzo, certainly the, uh, the couple of Americans who played in 2012. He was part of an incident with Carmelo Anthony who on cue knocks down the three. It was Campazzo who hit Mello in the groin as he attempted the three-point shot right in front of the U.S. bench. He later apologized to Kobe Bryant, not Carmelo, the logic being, in his words, that Chris Paul had hit him first and he hadn't apologized. Oh, okay. Schoolyard logic there. And that's the reason. But he was not all that popular with uh, Team no, USA no, that year. No, he was not. Carmel certainly didn't depreciate it. Called it, quote, a cheap shot. Hard to argue that point. Hey, the United States Olympic Committee has selected Los Angeles as the U.S. bid city to bring the Olympic and Paralympic Games back to the United States in 2024. Let's give our Team USA athletes an Olympic home field advantage that year. Learn more and show your support at LA24.org. U.S. is led by as many as 41. There's down to oh. 39, but they give it back. Campazzo brings it back. A bit of a turnover. For Argentina. Campazzo's, Campazzo and the uh, the Argentine are going with the gold uniforms here, not the, in my mind, not the fantastic blue and white ones that they've worn for years. I'm old school. I, I, this one's not bad, but I love, just love their old school uniforms. I always one of my favorite international uniforms those blue and white stripes. Jordan hands it off to DeRozan. He lost his shoe again. Anthony Mello's got the feeling. Another three for Carmelo Anthony, and the U.S. has really picked up the pace from outside the line. Now 14 of 39, nearly 36 percent, and Mello has 17 on the night. DeRozan again lost his shoe on that play. And there's DeAndre Jordan knocking it off the rim. Picked up on that real quickly. How much would he love that in the NBA? Can you imagine DeAndre Jordan with free reign to goaltend? We don't need that rule. Not in the NBA. I kind of like the rule, though. It, it set off an offensive rebound back to 14. You do or do not? I do. I like it, too. I'm trying to, especially in, in a national play, but I'm trying to wrap my mind around it, Matt. How would that work in an NBA game? And... I'm not sure. I, I, like I like it for pace of play, certainly. Mm -hmm. It's something that the, United, the NBA is always conscious of. Carino saves it for Argentina. They come back the other way. They don't have numbers. I wonder about the end of game situations that could develop. Would be very interesting. There would be situations where an offensive team would be forced to shoot rather than milking the clock a little bit, which is part of the intent, of course. Would change some things late. U.S. is four of six from three-point range here in the fourth quarter. Harrison Barnes, screen from Jordan. Pass Dahlia. Nice. Up and in for Harrison Barnes. HB with his second bucket of the night. He's got four. It's a nice play by Harrison Barnes. <laughs> is that a luxury for, like, a Coach K and Coach of these teams? Just look down your line and say, I need a shooter. I need a, call a shooter. I need a defender. Like you said earlier, not worried about anybody getting in foul trouble. <laughs> talent after talent after talent. USA Basketball on NBA TV is brought to you by Jeep, official vehicles of summer, and by Cisco, proud technology partner of USA Basketball. Let's take a look at tonight's play of the game presented by Kaiser Permanente and a play that illustrates everything that makes the United States so dangerous. Great hands by DeMarcus Cousins, the ability to force a turnover and to finish with Jimmy Butler getting an and one. 
Cuz also has 14 points, excuse me, 14 rebounds and 12 points here tonight. Finishing up this game, as you can see, United States with a put up 109 points. Okay. Campazzo had to force up to beat the shot clock, the deep three. They get it back. Minute 40 to go here in the first game of the U.S. senior men's team's exhibition schedule on their way to the Rio Olympics. Carmelo Anthony brings it up, guarded by Dahlia. <laughs> See you later, Delia. <laughs> Mello beat him left and then decided to go to the reverse. He's fouled. <laughs> Game effort by Delia, but he was in trouble out yeah, there on an he, island. He gave Carmelo that look. Uh, big fella's trying to slide his feet out past the three-point line with Carmelo. He has no chance. And likes nice little laugh from Carmelo. And once he gets in the paint, if you have space, He's either going to go over the top or through you and a nice pump fake to create space. Be a story to tell the guys back at his uh, Argentine pro team. His one on one battle with Carmelo <laughs> Anthony. Who knows he could meet him again in the Olympics. Argentina will be on the other side. Group B. U.S. has an interesting group including France. Their final game of pool play will against, be against a very good French team. You know, I, I think France, um, you know, not in the top four as far as FIBA rankings, but when you start talking about Nicholas Batum, Boris Diaw, Tony Parker on that squad, and Rudy Gobert mm -hmm. being able to change shots, that's a team you got to watch out for if you're the United States. France has not won an Olympic medal since a silver back in 2000. They have five current NBA players, two former NBA players on that team. Those are guys who are not going to be intimidated by the faces they see in the USA uniform. Turnover, Cuz. Slowed up for a moment with La Provitola in front of him, gets it back. Cuz working out of the post. And an easy two for DeMarcus Cousins. 14 points, 15 boards. A tidy double-double for DeMarcus Cousins here tonight. Making it look easy. You, you watch him, and yes, a lot of teams and people are shooting threes, even bigs, but he's still one of those guys that can dominate. Even with the new rules defensively, there's not a lot of space, but he can carve out space because of his first bulk, but also his ball handling, his ability down on the block. He has great footwork. <laughs> he's a guy that can go either hand, and he can face up and knock down shots. For those of you who missed the old school center, there are still a few left in the NBA. That's one of them. Marcus Gasol comes to mind as well. La Provitola with the uh, bucket here. And the U.S. does not have to shoot. Up 111 to 74. Kevin Durant heated up here in the second half, particularly the fourth quarter. He went for 23 tonight to lead the United States. 18 from Paul George in his U.S. senior men's national team comeback tonight. Mello had 17, and the U.S. wins it by 37 here tonight, 111 to 74. Initial impressions of this USA team, Smitty? Uh, I, I think for teams going up against this defense with these wing defenders, it's going to be tough. And then how do you box out DeAndre Jordan and DeMarcus Cousins? And we're not even going to talk about the three-point shot because they really didn't get hot in the three-point line. But when they do... It's going to be spectacular for them. I, it just comes down to their versatility on the wing defenders to be able to switch and create havoc. That's, that's I think, is going to set them apart. Offensive rebounding was really a major factor for the United States. They outscored Argentina by 20 in the paint, outscored them by 20 in second chance points as well. And there just aren't many teams they'll face in the Olympics who can match up with the physicality of Cousins and DeAndre Jordan, who both dominated in there. You're totally right. And I think when you have those deflections, and then if it's somewhat even, guys going for the basketball and then be able to get out and, and score on the break, the speed of this team is phenomenal. And I think that's what's going to be tough for teams to be able to keep up with them and their speed and guys that can cover a lot of ground with these athletic wings. And when all else fails, having 
one of the planet's great scorers on your roster in Kevin Durant is always a good plan. Uh, it is for sure. And then there's another guy in Carmelo Anthony that can flat out score the basketball as well. And Paul George and then Kyrie is one of those guys that we know that can take over the basketball game just because me being able to score the basketball with his ball handling ability.